guys, it is me, the Fury Hearted, and welcome to a Blender tutorial for Minecraft. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Minecraft fire rig that actually has animated flames. The reason I'm doing this is because when I was first starting out, I really had trouble with this because there was really no tutorials on how to do it. So I figured it out on my own and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So the original thing I did was I created a fire rig. That'll be available for download in the description, but if you want to have more fun or feel more accomplished and do it yourself, then just follow along with this tutorial. So the first step we're going to do is make the object. Now this can be done either two ways. One can be just adding in many different planes. And the other way would be to go into Minecraft and actually take a piece of fire that you've ignited and export it with a program called Mineways. If you're somewhat familiar with making Minecraft animations, then you'll know this technique. So just follow the steps like you would normally do and just export it as a very small OBJ file. Back here in Blender, we can go ahead and click on the file, Imports, Wavefront OBJ, and navigate to wherever you stored that file and import it. So now, if you're familiar with the prep tool MC Prep, then you can go ahead and use that just to get a basic rundown of what the material is supposed to look like. Now I'm just gonna delete this extra stuff that I had here. You can delete by using the X button. So now for this, we're gonna go ahead and click on the tool section, set origin, origin to geometry and that'll send it right to the center of this block. So now, with this as our base, we can go ahead and go into edit mode. You can either do that by going into here, clicking edit mode, or just hitting the tab button. So now we're going to remove all the faces in the center because, for, personally, I don't really like that it's all slanted. And for this technique, it's gonna be really hard to work with. So go ahead and click Z, so that makes it all transparent, like a wireframe. Hit the B, so you can select multiple things at once drag across and the only reason I'm doing this is because there are actually two layers of faces and it's quicker to do it this way. So click X to delete, click faces. Now we can go back by clicking here and click material. So now we're going to click on each of these two faces and actually slightly rotate them the smallest bit we can possibly do. This is important because in the method when this technique of making animated fire, it is very important that it is offset by a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit R, hit Z, and then hit the smallest number I can think of right now. Actually, you don't really need a very small number. You can just do 0 0.1 and get away with it. So there we go. We have our now offset faces. We're just going to go ahead and fill in the center with these two different facing faces. So let's click on one of these, duplicate this in the direction that it is facing, in this case, X, and then hit 0 0.5. We're gonna have to hit negative for where we're facing. Hit enter, click on this face, shift, oh, duplicate is shift D. So duplicates, hit Y, and hit 0 0.5. And that's right in the center. So there we go. Now we have our fire object. Now, step two is adding in the fire texture for this. There are two ways to obtain this in this video. One is to go into the description and use the fire texture that I provide in the description. The second way would be to actually get the file yourself from Minecraft itself. You can do that by using the jar file and opening it up. On a PC, you could probably use a program like 7-Zip to open that up. On a Mac, you could just use the built-in archive system to turn it into an actual file. However way you obtain it is fine. So now we're going to click on this little corner here, click that, drag it over so that we have a second window, hit T, you can remove these little side panels right now. Click on this menu here, and then click on Node Editor, right there. Hit Enter and move this. So, MC Prep provides us with pretty good starting place, but for the way we are going to make this fire animated, we are going to need to change a few things. First, let's change the image texture. Go into this little folder here, by clicking the file, and navigating to wherever you stored your file. The one you should have grabbed should be labeled uh, Fire Layer Zero, like this one here. So open that image, and it kind of looks strange right now, but in a bit, we'll be able to adjust that. So, now we're going to add in two nodes. Click Shift-A, 
which is pretty much the add menu. Click on the search, and this is the fastest way to do it. Search for these two notes. Map, mapping, which is this one here. And shift add, shift A, search, texture coordinate, right there. So now, here, this little one called generated, we're gonna drag into vector. And now for this mapping here, we're gonna drag this vector into the other vector. And now, don't worry, if it looks like this, we can fix that. Right now, click scale on the Y section, type in negative 0.03, and that should scale it right. Yeah, that looks great. So now let's rotate this so that it's right side up. Go into this little Z section and type in 180. And it rotates all the way around. Perfect. Um, you may see that this fire on this side kind of looks a little bit strange. But there's a reason to that. I actually made a mistake, guys. These these uh, these faces this way are the faces you actually need to adjust. So you can click on all these, rotate Z, 0 0.1. And there you go. See, it really depends. If the fire is fine in this direction, then these are the faces you need to adjust. Now they've got all our slanted slightly slanted faces, which is actually very important. So, now we are going to make a second material, which will actually be the one that we can use for this here. Go into the materials section. First, rename this to whatever direction that the fire is originally facing right now, which in this case is Y, just so that we don't get them mixed up. So click this little plus button to add a new material, click new, and then go ahead and delete these original things that get added here. So X. Go into Fire Y and copy all this. You click A and Command or Control copy depending on your device. So copy, click on Material, change this to Fire X. And then click here and Command or Control V to paste. So there we go. We have our other Fire material. So now very important here, we are going to click on the faces that we have, we are assigning to this texture, which are these three right here, that have the weird stripes. And then we're going to click on Fire X and click Assign. You'll notice that there's some weird whiteness here, but in the rendered mode, there is absolutely nothing there. So don't worry. Now, let's adjust the settings so that you can actually see the fire. If we have done this correctly, if I set this to a negative 200-ish, you should start to see the fire. And yes, you can start to see it. So we need to slowly move these numbers so that it gets closer. That looks actually, that looks almost, almost perfect. For the measurement, if you rotate all the faces 0. Oops, that doesn't look right. Oh, wait, rotate 0. Point. I'm gonna fix this right now. I'll be back in a moment. So, after a bit of trial of error, I have finally gotten the fire to where it needs to. You can check the uh, coordinates for this, as I have. I just duplicated the one that was moved to, that was rotated 0.1 over to these coordinates. You can pause if you need to copy them. These coordinates here, and these coordinates here. Also, adjust this number. I changed to this, and it seems to work just about fine for here. So perfect, we have applied our materials. The next step is to add keyframes. So for this, we're going to set our start on down on this timeline here to one, and set the end to 32, because if you look at the texture, there are 32 different faces. Now all we need to do is go to this little location section within each of the materials, because we'll have to do this separately for both, because we have two materials. Uh, there are 32 different uh, coordinates for the Y section that I have found. I want to save you all the painstaking trouble of figuring it out and write it down here. Go ahead and right click, click this insert single keyframe button. So now it'll insert a keyframe right here from the front number we type. Go down here to the timeline and click this automatic keyframe button so that it'll continually keep adding the more we type and the more we move down the timeline. So for the first keyframe, you're gonna need this number. Just follow along. 969, go to the next keyframe, 937, 
906. You can hit the arrow buttons to scroll through these, by the way. 875, arrow button. 844, arrow button. 812, arrow button. 781, and 75. As you can see here, the fire keeps updating after every few frames we do. 719, oh, that's 119, my bad. 719, 687, 656, 625, 594, 562, 531, just 0 0.5, 469, 437, 406, 375, 344, 312, 281, 25, 219, 187, 156, 125, 0, 094, very important, 0, 62, no, 62, and 0, 3, 1. And the very last keyframe is just 0, 0. Perfect. We have all the keyframes for this. So now, let's go ahead and click on the first one here. Click, sh go into rendered mode, and just scroll through the frames by hitting the left arrow. And as you can see, the fire is moving. It's exactly what we wanted. So now, just do the exact same thing for the fire Y material. I'll save you the trouble and just skip to the part where we get to the uh, compositing and stuff. And zero. There. Now I have added all of these. So, if we take a look at animation here, you'll notice that there's a bunch of keyframes under these fire Y and fire X sections. We can close those for now. But if you were to take all these little fire keyframes, keep grabbing these, and hitting shift D and dragging them down, then the fire will f keep repeating straight from keyframe one every time you duplicate these over. So you can keep going on almost infinitely as long as you keep placing more keyframes. See, already by duplicating, we've already gotten 128 frames. So that's pretty much how this works. All these keyframes. The last step is more of an optional thing. You can go into the compositing section and add a quick little blur. So here you can go ahead and click shift add, search, or I mean shift A, search for a mix, search for a mix, and then you can go ahead and shift A and search for blur. I like using this. So what you do is you take the whatever image you are going to render, put it into the image section down here. Grab this image, put it in the bottom, and then grab the original image and put it in the top. Then put this into composites. For rendering, there really isn't any settings that I should recommend. Just whatever your computer can handle and whatever shape and size you're gonna use for whatever it is. So right now, I'm going to render the first frame. And here's the first frame. So now we're gonna check mark this so that we get a backdrop and shift control, click this just so that we can have a little image back here. Let's move this viewer down here. So now if we were to take these two of the blur values, the X and Y, and move them up more and more, you'll start to see more and more of a blur every single time. So let's take this here, and there's a complete blur here. So just bring this down more and more until you get about a glow you like. Looks about good there and that's pretty much the uh, fire rig I'll have this available of course in the description below for you to download but if you followed along with this then go ahead and please leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials I might do in the future and, but anyways guys my name is the fury hearted and I bid you all farewell thanks so much for watching